Welcome to Electra Online. Now let's try something slightly more difficult than the previous video. Here we have a prism. So you can see that one of the, one of the sides is slanted. And we're trying to find simply the volume of this prism. Now obviously we don't need to do a triple integral to do that. You can very easily use some geometry. But this is just an illustration so we can learn how to do this. So the volume is going to be the triple integral of a, of a small volume element, which is essentially a small cube that is uh, dimensions, has dy, dx, dz dimensions, and we're going to integrate that in three directions. Now notice that the height of the prism is 6, out to here from the origin to here is 2 and from the origin out to here is 4 but then we have the slanted side and if you think about it you can see that on the slanted side that y equals 4 minus 2x well when x equals 0 y equals 4 when x equals 2 y equals 0 so yes the equation does appear to work notice that the order of integration is going to be a little bit different we're going to start with y first then x then z after the y, doesn't matter if we do x first and z or do z first and x, but there's a reason why we do y first, because there's a relationship, a functional relationship between y and x. So, the first limits, sets of limits of integration as we integrate over y, notice on the left side y is 0, but if you then go from the left to the right, notice that depending upon where you are in the x direction, or where, well, not in the z direction, but where you are in the x direction, where you end up on the side depends on the value for x. So however far you go from y equals 0 to when you hit this side, that will be determined by the value of x. So that's why the limits of integration for dy is going to be y equals 0 on the low side and y equals 4 minus 2x on the high side. So you see that in this case, the limits of integration do involve a function of the variable x. And that's probably why we want to take x as the second uh, variable that we want to integrate over. So x and, x and z are considered constants. dy is going to be integrated first. So the integral of dy is simply y. And so that ends up with the two in integrals right here. And dy integrated will be y. And the limits are going to go from 0 to 4 minus 2x. And we still have our dx and our dz. And of course, when plugging the lower limit, we get nothing. Plug in the upper limit, you get 4 minus 2x. So this is equal to the double integral over y and z of the quantity 4 minus 2x dx dz. All right. Now, what's going to be the limit when we integrate for, uh, over x? And notice when... When uh, we integrate over x, x can be 0 all the way to 2. But why do we go from 0 to 2, not from, from 0 to hitting the edge here, the side of this prism? Well, since we're ready to carry that in our first integral, that that was the limit of integration when we go from left to right, we don't want to do it a second time. We now want to integrate over the total width that the direction, from x, the direction x can be, which is from 0 to 2. We're no longer limited by this side. We're limited by the side on the first integral, so we don't want to do it again on the second integral. So the integration limits for the second integral in x is going to be from 0 to 2. That's the total possible distance you can travel in the x direction. And then, if you look in the z direction, notice z can be from 0 all the way to 6. There's no limits there at all. So 0 to 6, no limitations in the x to the y direction for that. So those are going to be the z limits. So first we're going to integrate over dx. And that means that we now have one single integral, integral left with z equals 0 to z equals 6. And then here, when we have 4dx integrated, that becomes 4x. And minus, we have 2x. Well, that becomes 2x squared divided by 2. And of course, the 2's cancel out. And we're going to integrate that from 0 to 2. And we still have our dz. All right, when plugging the lower limit, again, we get nothing. Plug in the upper limit, we get the following. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to 6 of 4 times 2 minus 2 squared dz. 
And so that would be 8 minus 4, which is 4, which can come out of integral sign. So this becomes 4 times the integral from 0 to 6 of dz. Now that's easy to integrate. That simply becomes 4 times z. The limits of integration are from 0 to 6. When I plug in the lower limit, I get nothing. Plug in the upper limit, I get 6. So this is equal to 4 times 6, or 24 for the total volume of that prism. And of course, you can quickly check. Notice that this is a, is a triangular-shaped prism at the top. Uh, if we want to find the area at the top, this is 2 by 4 times a half. So that would be area of a triangle. That would be half times 2 times 4, which is 4, times the height, which is 6. 4 times 6 is 24. So very quickly, we could have figured out, indeed, that the volume is 24. But the reason why we do the triple integral example is so we can see how the limits of integration work. The first, set of, the first set of limits from 0 to 4 minus 2x, well, that's determined by being able to go from the edge here, where y is 0 anywhere along that plane, the xy plane. And then notice that the distance you're going to travel until you hit this side will depend upon what the value of x is, which in turn will give you a value for y. So that's why the limits are a function of x for the variable y. Once you have that limitation taken care of, now you can see that you're going to integrate over the entire long, biggest width in the x direction and the biggest height in the z direction for your limits in x and z. So that is how we do that in a very simplistic fashion. Notice that as the, the shapes are going to get more complicated, it's going to get more and more difficult to figure out what the limits of integration are. But at least having that slow buildup, you can kind of get the feel and get the confidence that you can figure out how to do that.